this lesson, we're going to discuss Security Gateway's archiving settings, including archiving inbound and outbound email, archiving from journal reports, creating archive journal reports, managing archive stores, and searching for archived messages using the advanced search options. Security Gateway's archiving settings are located under the Setup Users menu, under the Archiving section, and is enabled via settings found under the Configuration menu. But before we talk about the options on this screen, I'll briefly discuss how the archiving system works in Security Gateway. When archiving is enabled, Security Gateway stores a copy of all inbound and outbound mail to a Firebird database. And as an administrator, you can determine where that database is stored, and you can use Security Gateway's internal Firebird database, or you can designate an external database. And we'll get to those settings here in a bit. To enable archiving, simply check this box in Security Gateway under the Configuration section. And note, by the way, that archiving can be enabled globally or on a per-domain basis using the drop-down menu at the upper right-hand corner. The next two options are used to configure the journaling features in Security Gateway. And though they both deal with journaling, each one serves a different purpose. Journal reports are used to archive all mail collected in a designated mailbox, such as when the mail server is configured to send a copy of all inbound and outbound mail to a specific email address. Email journaling, on the other hand, places a copy of all mail to be archived in the designated mailbox. So basically, these two features are opposite sides of the journaling process. So when the first option, accept journal reports and forwarded messages sent to this mailbox is enabled, then all messages forwarded to the address shown here, as well as messages listed in inbound journal reports, will be archived if either the sender or the recipient is a local Security Gateway user. For example, let's say your mail server is configured to send a copy of all mail to a designated email address. Here's an example of how that would work using mdaemon, and this would work with any other mail server as well. We've configured our mail server to send a copy of all mail to journal at example.com. And then the account that is used to collect all of these messages addressed to this account would then be configured to forward all of those messages to the journal account that is set up in Security Gateway. In other words, let's go back to Security Gateway. We've set up a mailbox in Security Gateway called journal accept. So all messages that will be forwarded to journal accept at example.com or whatever your domain is will be processed and then archived if they are sent to Security Gateway from a domain mail server. Now, if we go back to the mail server side, here's an example. I've created this journal account on my mail server and I've configured this account to forward all mail to the address that I entered in Security Gateway. So all of the messages stored in the journal mailbox on the mail server are being forwarded to journal accept at example.com. And I've specified the host name or IP address, and I've entered authentication credentials as needed. And if we go back into Security Gateway, this is the mailbox that all of those messages will be sent to. So when Security Gateway receives messages forwarded to the journal accept address that you specify here, then copies of all of those messages will be archived. And you can verify that those messages have been archived by reviewing the SMTP inbound log, which I'll show you in just a moment. But first, let's save our changes. And then I'm going to come back to this screen, but first let me show you what to look for in the SMTP logs to verify when a journal report has been received by Security Gateway and subsequently archived. If we go to the logging menu right here, and then we select log files, you'll see the archiving process for those inbound messages in the inbound log, which you'll find here. And then here's where Security Gateway received the forwarded message sent from the mail server. Security Gateway then checked to ensure that either the sender or recipient is a local user. In this case, Security Gateway found the recipient in the local database. And then you can verify here that the attached message will be archived. In addition to being able to accept journal reports for purposes of archiving, Security Gateway can create journal reports and send them to a designated address. This feature is enabled via this checkbox here to enable email journaling. This is basically the other side of the equation from 
the above where we talked about accepting journal reports. So in that instance, Security Gateway queried a mailbox and archived the messages that were sent to that mailbox. In this case, however, messages are placed in a designated mailbox. So for all messages that are specified based on what you select in the drop-down menu shown here, whether you select internal messages only, external messages only, or all messages, the messages that meet these criteria will be sent to the mailbox that you specify below. So for each of those messages, a journal report email will be created and sent to this address, and a copy of the original message will be attached to the report. And the body of the journal report will have information from the original message, such as the sender, email address, the message subject, the message ID, and the recipient's email address. So in this example, on my mail server, I've created an email address of journal-create at example.com, and I've enabled the journaling feature to send journal reports to this designated email address. And if we look at the inbox for that email address, it looks like this. I'm using MDaemon Webmail as an example, but it will be similar with whichever mail client or mail server you are using. In this example, the sender and recipient are shown, the message subject and the message ID, and the original email is attached here. So this email message attachment can be opened, and you can download it to your local desktop, open it in another mail client, or save it to another directory or drive. So if we go back to the archiving configuration screen, in order for this feature to work properly, make sure that you have checked the box at the top to enable email archiving. And you can review the security gateway logs to verify that the journaling process was successful. So for example, if we go to the message log and we review the transcript for a message, here's where security gateway executed journaling based on the settings that we just configured. A copy of the message will be redirected to the address that we specified on the archive configuration screen. And in addition, since archiving was enabled to begin with, Security Gateway executed the archiving process and confirmed that the message will be archived. When this box is checked, Security Gateway will automatically create new archive stores once they reach a certain size. And you can configure automatic archive store creation via this link here. Notice, by the way, there's another link to manage archive stores. We'll talk about the settings that you'll find here when we discuss managing archive stores, which you can access via the link on the left-hand side. So we'll discuss that next. So let's talk about automatic archive store creation. We'll click on this link. And on this screen, you can specify when Security Gateway should create a new archive store. You can choose to create a new archive store yearly, quarterly, monthly, or when the current archive store reaches a certain threshold, such as a given number of archived messages or a given size in gigabytes. And when creating a new archive store, you can specify whether to use a local instance of the Firebird database or whether to connect to an external Firebird database located on another server, as indicated here. If you choose the second option to connect to an external server, then you can specify the path to that server here. In the current configuration, I'm using the local Firebird database, so I will leave this option selected. And when creating new archive stores, Security Gateway creates them in this default directory specified here. Notice that a macro is used for the domain so that archive stores can be created and placed in a directory corresponding to the domain that the archive belongs to. And using a macro will keep you from having to create them manually. It would automatically populate the name of the domain in this directory based on the macro. So for example, instead of having the domain macro when the directory is actually created, it will create a file corresponding to each of my domains. For example, a folder called example.com. By checking this box here, you can select different directories to store the database, the message contents, and the search indexes. If you have a high traffic server, placing these items in different directories can help improve performance. 
Once you've configured automatic archive store creation, you can then simply click on Save and Close to save your changes. And by the way, as with many settings in Security Gateway, the options on this screen can be configured globally or on a per domain basis using the drop down menu at the top right hand corner as shown here. Now let's talk about how to create an archive store and configure archive store settings. You can manage archive stores via the link shown here under the archiving section in Security Gateway. So we'll click on archive stores and this presents a list of the archive stores currently found in Security Gateway. On this screen, the checkbox under the Enabled column determines whether you can search that archive using search queries. Under the Status column, an active status simply means that messages are currently being archived to that archive store. And then moving to the right, we have the domain associated with the archive, followed by the name of the archive store, which in most cases is automatically generated by Security Gateway, but you can create your own naming conventions. The next column shows how many messages are stored in the archive, followed by the size of the archive store. And then finally, we have the path where the archive store is located. To create an archive store, we can simply click on the new button as shown here. And when the first box is checked, you'll be able to search the archive using search queries. And when the second box is checked, messages will be archived to this archive store. We could then select the domain that the archive store is associated with. And then you can give the archive store a name here. Now, of course, when you've configured automatic archive store creation, the archive store name will be generated automatically. This screen allows you to manually input whatever name you would like for the archive store. Under the database section, you can choose whether to use the local Firebird database file, which is the default setting and will be used under most circumstances, or you have the option of connecting to a different Firebird database, in which case you can select the appropriate option and then specify the database path if your database is stored locally on the Security Gateway server, or if you are using a database on another server, you can choose the second option here, and then specify the server name or IP address, and then whichever port is being used on that server by the database. And if it requires authentication, you can enter the username and password in the blanks as shown here, and then simply click on Save and Close. In this example, to keep things simple, we will use the option of a local fiber database. Under the storage location section, you can specify the location that you would like your archive store to be created. And by checking this box, you can specify a separate directory for the database, the archive content, and the archive search indexes. And then click on Save and Close to save your new archive store. You can use the edit button to make changes to an archive store, which basically does the same thing as double clicking on an archive store. For example, when clicking on it, it takes you to the archive store configuration screen like this. You can delete an archive store and you can use the maintenance button here to rebuild the full text search indexes for the archive store. When you click on that option, will be given a pop-up window asking if you are sure you want to rebuild the full text search index for the archive store. Note that the archive store will not be able to be searched until the process is complete, so we can simply click on OK to confirm. And Security Gateway will rebuild the archive search index in the background. This helps to keep the archive content in searchable format so that it's easier to find what you're looking for. When you need to find messages that have been archived in Security Gateway, you can do so using the Searched Archived Messages menu as shown here. By default, you are presented with a simple search field where you can simply enter your search term and then click on the search button to find what you're looking for. You can then select a message and either view the message like this, and from here you can download the message to your desktop. You can delete the message from the archive. You can click here to restore the archived message back to the user's inbox, and you can download the message to your local desktop. The message will be downloaded as a .eml file, which you can open in your local mail client.
For more precise searching, you can click on the Advanced button to bring up the Advanced Search screen. Using the options on this screen, you can enter a search term, specify where that term should be, such as in the message subject or body, or within the sender or recipient, or within an attachment file name. You can specify who the message should be from. You can specify who it should be to, or an address that may be found in the CC or BCC field. And then you can narrow your search query down to all dates or within a specific range, such as the last 24 hours, 48 hours, the last week, and so forth. Or you can specify a specific date range using the options shown here. So for example, if I want to do a query and find all messages beginning on October 1st, I can select the date in the options shown here. I can further specify if I want to search for messages with or without attachments or both, or messages that fall within a certain size, or messages that were sent with a specific priority. And then from here, we can simply click on search. And here are all the messages that meet our search criteria. So it's very easy to find archived messages in Security Gateway and then restore them to the mailbox or download them to your local desktop.